Hi, everyone. Welcome to this SAP community call. My name is Minina Chao. I'm part of the SAP community team and your host during today's call. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I want to make you aware of how you can submit questions. So all of you should see the Q&A button here in Zoom. We will definitely have enough time at the end of this call to address your questions. So make sure you submit them during the presentation already. Um, we're here to hear about sustainability management by SAP. And we'll hear from Gunther roth Ermel, who is leading the sustainability unit at SAP. And we have Stefan Hiel, who is product manager for the SAP Sustainability Control Tower, and we'll do a demo. Yeah, I think this was a very short introduction because we have lots to cover in this call. So happy to hand it over to you, Gunther, and then Stefan. Yeah. Thank you very much and uh, hey a very warm welcome from my side uh, as well to all of you thank you for joining today and indeed uh, the topic that we'd like to cover today is a, a very important one it's sustainability management and in particular today we'd like to make you familiar with a new part of our sustainability management family which is the sap sustainability control tower uh, with me is Stefan Hiel, who will uh, yeah, uh, bring us deeper into this important topic uh, that is a cornerstone of our strategy. So if you could move on to the next slide, uh, please. And, uh, yeah, exactly the one with the overview, please. Thank you. So when we talk about sustainability management uh, by SAP, what do we mean? And uh, of course, SAP has a has a broad and rich portfolio that could help all of our clients to you know, become more sustainable organizations. Uh, and in particular, we have a, a few very important focus uh, areas that we, that we address uh, with, with development and investment. First and foremost, there is the, of course, important topic of climate action. Uh, and, and I guess we all agree in this call that you know, we need to strive to reduce emissions and, and, and greenhouse gas in particular. And this is why, uh, again, we have a, a offering of, of products in that space. But very importantly, recently we announced and launched a new part in that space as well. We call it SAP Product Footprint Management. And there has been actually a community call a while ago about this topic as well. Uh, would like to, again, point you to that session in case you have missed it. That was a very important uh, part of, of, of our strategy and, and implementation. Equally important uh, for us is the topic of circular economy. We all know that we want to introduce a stronger circularity aspect in our business processes. We need to you know, have a higher degree of reuse. And in particular, we aim at reduction of waste. Uh, and, and that's why we have launched another product. Uh, stay with that slide, please, for a second. We have launched another product, which, which we uh, call SAP Responsible Design and Production. Uh, that is, uh, in particular, addressing extended producer responsibility obligations and, and helping uh, our customers to address, you know, uh, all of the obligations that come with the delivery of products and, and corresponding packaging. But again, this is not the focus for today. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of more uh, um, also material and sessions on this topic. Happy to point you to additional information. Social responsibility, we all know, is, is very important and near and dear to our hearts. Uh, again, an, an area where we, where we have strong uh, products out there. If you just think, for example, on the health and safety management aspect of our SAP uh, environment health and safety solution, uh, that, but that's just one example. There's more. We, we cover diversity and inclusion and other topics with the help of, of SAP's product portfolio. But today, and this is what we'd like to focus on, is um, the focus on SAP Sustainability Control Tower. And why do we address uh, you know, this topic that we uh, sometimes call holistic steering and reporting with a new solution? It's because we clearly hear from our customers, we hear from you and our partners that there is the need to address uh, a more holistic view across all uh, sustainability related activities with one strong data set below. We consistently hear that 
uh, many organizations are lacking the right data to make decisions in the sustainability space. They are uh, lacking the data and the right quality to steer all of the activities. And, and simply there is not enough, enough visibility into all activities. And that's why we decided to address this with a new, with a new product. And, uh, and uh, we are very proud and happy to have launched this a couple of days ago. So at this point in time, I'd like to hand it over to Stefan, who will introduce the SAP Sustainability Control Tower and what it does to you. Over to you, Stefan. Thanks, Gunther. So Sustainability Control Tower really enables our customers to evolve from infrequent, often very manual ESG reporting to more integrated automated sustainability performance management, as we call it, that supports to reach their sustainability ambition. And as Gunther mentioned, it's all about having the right data in the right place. And in order to get there, there are various challenges that customers need to overcome, like how do I get to a more automated and comprehensive data collection, but at the same time, ensure that quality and reliability of this data or how to bring this data to the responsible leaders in a transparent, easy to consume way so they are really empowered to drive action. And last but not least, how to embed all those insights, those data points into the operational processes that really kind of it can be actioned upon. So there are really many of those challenges which make it currently quite hard for most companies to evolve to this next level. And this is where Sustainability Control Tower brings capabilities that are meant to address some of those challenges. So we have um, kind of clustered our cap product capabilities into those six areas, which you see here. And as indicated from the, from the bars at the bottom, they kind of build on each, on each other. So obviously it all starts with data. Yeah? So, SAP is of course in a unique position to integrate with a lot of the relevant ESG and sustainability data from existing sources like HR systems, SAP finance, uh, or our SAP sustainability solution portfolio. But it's also clear that at, yeah, at no company, all this relevant data will come from SAP sources. Yeah? So we have built our technology stack in a very open and a flexible way to integrate with yeah, basically any third party system or, or database, um, but also upload flat file at the most basic level. An essential aspect here is to not only bring this data into a database, yeah, but to really kind of take action to harmonize the data and, for example, consistently apply the same reporting structures that are already established in the, in the company, like a reporting line, uh, business units, brands, or, or plan structures. So it all needs to be harmonized around those common structures, because otherwise you cannot consistently kind of uh, get transparency and, and, and assign accountability for these kind of data. Now, once we have the data in the system, yeah, it's obviously that we can generate insights based on this data. Yeah, we can analyze it, we can create actionable insights. And um, one focus area that we started uh, with and that you're going to see in the demo in a, in a minute is to represent this really vast ESG data domain in a simple and understandable dashboards so you can really drive the necessary transparency in the whole organization. Performance improvement goes into even more depths there. So um, this is where we see target setting and monitoring, what if analysis, forecasting, and these kind of techniques to really go from, from insight to action, so to say. Disclosure and communication is obviously satisfying the needs of you know, both internal and external stakeholders, be it government, um, be it financial community, be it your employees. Yeah? So they all want to know how's the company performing um, in the sustainability area. And um, the last area here on, on this slide is the business network and external data integration field, where ultimately you want to reach beyond company borders, right? Like every, every company is part of a bigger process. So you want to really uh, exchange data in your whole value chain 
and also do things like exchange benchmark data and really see where are you compared to the rest of the industry. So just to give you some additional context for the, for the demo, um, we are basically in our initial release, we have taken a framework which was issued by the World Economic Forum together with many other leading organizations. And it's a relatively simple framework in, in this context, uh, but it still, it has uh, 21 metrics in, in the core, core domain of this framework, uh, which span really this diverse kind of data domain of, you know, obviously environmental, planet kind of metrics, people, it's kind of the social dimension, employees, um, prosperity, which looks a lot at financial data, even and how can, kind of economic um, contribution to society. And uh, last part here is, is the governance area. Yeah, so it's really vast data domains that we're talking about. Yeah, And I think um, that also kind of drives one of these complexity in the, in the whole um, domain and drive some of the, the really the core concepts of how we're approaching it. What you see here that luckily um, a lot of this data as mentioned can already be found in existing kind of leading SAP products ranging from HR, finance, S4HANA and the sustainability portfolio. But now um, let's come to a quick demo to just bring some of those concepts uh, to life. So let me switch to the system. <clears throat> so what you're looking at is the dashboarding part of the sustainability control tower. And what we've done here, so you, if you looked closely, you recognize already some of those metrics, right? So we are in the, P in the planet pillar here. We also have governance tab, people prosperity. So we're kind of following the structure of the framework that we are supporting here at the beginning. And like what, what we have done yeah, to make it easy to understand, we have not chosen a way where we would just now put, you know, chart, 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 widget, 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 like it would really be overcrowded. So we tried to come up with a really kind of structured approach on how to represent this, um, this vast EST data domain. And now you see for each metric, we have kind of this, um, yeah, uh, metric panel as, as we call it. So top one is greenhouse gas emissions. Then we have water consumption, land use. And the last one in the planet area is TCFD implementation. Yeah. And then you see kind of repeating patterns of data visualization. I mean, they are not all completely the same because also the reporting requirements differ from metric to metric. But what you typically see here is kind of the, yeah, the, 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 the metric, the KPI itself. Yeah? So how many tons of CO2 have been emitted? How did that develop um, to, uh, versus the previous year and over time? Yeah? So this really gets, helps you this, get this insight over trend. Uh, then in this case, we have a breakdown in this case by greenhouse scope, scope one, scope two, and then a further breakdown of those respective scopes into source types and, um, and, and then kind of emission types. Let's just have a look at, at the other pillars really quick, just to give you another sense of the, of the data. So people, as mentioned, um, mostly about employees, about social topics, so diversity inclusion here, share of women in management roles, uh, ethnicity, which is interestingly um, yeah, not really reported in, in, in most parts of Europe, um, but for example, in the US or South Africa, it's actually mandatory to report uh, kind of um, by ethnicity, how many um, kind of um, leaders do you have by ethnicity and so on. Um, and then there's more like risk for incident of child and or forced to compulsory labor. So this one is, for example, also a regulation which has no, is not really quantitative. Yeah? So this is basically just about having some measures in place, some disclosure, some processes documented. And in this case, we'd basically just represent this as kind of an action item and we would link to another source uh, where this kind of information would be maintained. Health and safety is part of the people pillar training completes it. Um, if you look at pros prosperity, so we have um, 
the absolute number and rate of employment. So obviously it's, a, it's also a big good for society, so to say, if you know, um, company provides employment opportunities to, to society, uh, but then also kind of how, what's the economic contribution, what's the, the um, um, employee wages and benefits which are being distributed, community investment and, and other kind of metrics here. Um, and financial investment contribution is more talk, uh, focused around um, shareholders, I would say. Good, let me go a little bit deeper into um, one of those metrics. So as you can see here, we have consciously decided to stay quite high level. Yeah, obviously we will also have filters here on top, reporting period, country, business unit, all these kind of things, but still it remains quite high level. And sometimes you really have also to answer more detailed questions, right? Um, and for this, we are basically using, um, uh, yeah, functionality that we call by now in, in pop-ups. So for example, if I want to find out more about what's behind this greenhouse gas emissions metric or, or reporting standard by as by the World Economic Forum, you can click here on the, on the more info button <clears throat> and then more information will be shown. I could also um, click on the insights button, which will typically then um, kind of go deeper into, into the data. So in this case, we have a, a more detailed um, trend of a time chart, but it might also be kind of um, outliers, forecasts, and these kind of things. So this is continuously evolving as well. And then for the power users, so to say, we have the explore data button here, for which if you click on it, we are basically launching um, yeah, out of the box functionality from our underlying technology, which is Sub Analytics Cloud here. And let's say I want to have a breakdown of emissions by country. Yeah, and then of course I don't need the time here, but I want to have country as a dimension. Uh, line chart is not really suited. Let me change to bar chart. And then, for example, if I want to know it by um, this em emission type, then I would add this. Not really easy to digest, so I can go to uh, a stacked bar chart and then yeah i think this will give a better picture i could also switch to tabular view if i need to take the, the numbers and you know put it into some um, reply to to an internal or external stakeholder or you, or what have you good um, another quite simple but i think useful feature that we introduced is this links panel here so in many cases there will be already existing source applications and also even dashboards, right? Think about the HR domain that we have under people. I'm pretty sure that for most customers, there will be already existing diversity inclusion dashboards, which maybe go to much greater detail. Or in the financial area, I think it's almost certain that there will be already existing dash dashboards. And we don't want to compete with those dashboards. We don't want to create unnecessary redundancy, right? Sustainability control tower is really here to create this broad comprehensive overview uh, about uh, ESG sustainability performance. So from that point of view, we're just pragmatically integrating and putting all the relevant links here in, in one place. So for example, and these are obviously just, just um, demos, yeah? For each customer, this would look uh, different, the links. So here, for example, we could link to our uh, SAP product footprint management analytics dashboard. That Gunther quickly mentioned this product in the beginning. So this is a product which is um, dedicated to look into much more detailed in, in scope three emissions. Huh? So if you want to look more in the scope three, you could jump off to this dashboard and continue your analytics journey there. Good. So that was kind of the, the fun part, yeah, right? So creating a dashboard and analytics, I think is important, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't solve the hard nuts, right? So I think this is the relatively simple part. Um, from that point of view, I would also like to look a little bit under the hood, yeah? Um, this is always a little bit hard to demo as you can imagine, um, but I, I try my best to just give you a little bit of a glimpse about this data sourcing, key figure management, harmonization elements that I just highlighted very briefly at the beginning. So let me jump to a, an, another 
uh, to the backend, so to say, of sustainability control tower. And uh, yeah, we're using here uh, an SAP um, a product called Data Warehouse Cloud, which really takes care of the, the data sourcing um, uh, part. Yeah, so we have a lot of powerful functionality there. Um, one important point is obviously to get the data into the system, right? And I already promised a lot of flexibility when it comes to data sources and a lot of um, different options. So just to give you an idea, if I just would create a new data source here, <clears throat> you get a glimpse of the different connectors which come with this product already. So obviously connecting to the SAP ABAP uh, stack, but also um, yeah, various uh, database, uh, databases, cloud-based uh, technologies, uh, S SAP HANA database, um, generic OData to connect to um, OData interfaces. And uh, yeah, if you come back to our kind of people diversity and inclusion um, example, you know, connect directly to success factors, which is an HR solution by SAP or also to the SAP BW, which is a storage of a lot of business information at many of our customers. Yeah? So very flexible and very powerful in this regards. Now, let me just jump to another aspect. Um, I was talking about high quality data. Um, and for this, we actually need to, to do some validation, to do some quality checks, yeah? because um, one of the key um, uh, key powers of SCP is to bring data from multiple sources and often it might even be manually created Excel files right from somewhere but then combine it into an into kind of a data model which really makes sense to consistently look at the data to slice and dice it to report by business unit by country and and so on and so on so for this we also need to have some data validation and, and quality checks right because we need to know um, kind of what data is going in and where there are some inconsistency which needs to be fixed. Yeah? And this just shows you such a data validation workflow. Um, we're looking at people data here, as you can see, ethnicity, gender, uh, org unit, grade. And we're basically having um, uh, structures, master data structures, uh, which get used to validate the incoming transactional data against. And this will then also help the cons uh, consumers or the customers to, uh, yeah, to, to get to high quality data and, and really enable it to fit together in the end. Another area, let me do another short jump here. Um, this is, put it into the screen. Um, also gives just a, a glimpse on the on the data models which are uh, underneath sustainability control tower. Um, you don't need to look at all the details here, but again, you will notice you know uh, some of the dimensions here, like grade, like ethnicity, like business location, organizational structure, and you know what we do is basically we really combine, we harmonize all this data that they fit together in this high quality data model that allows you then to really uh, analyze, create meaningful insights and create transparency for your company, not only once a year in a manual process, right? This uh, is, I think, what's happening uh, qu quite often now, but this really allows you to do it much more automated at scale and at a much higher frequency. And only then you actually can go from reporting once a year at a company level to company-wide performance management at a, at a uh, decent kind of cadence. Good, with that demo, Gunther, I would like to hand back to you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, great stuff. And, and I hope you all got a, got a good impression about the uh, SAP Sustainability Control Tower and, and what it does as a centerpiece of our strategy. Now, before we come to Q&A, let me um, quickly point to a, a number of important aspects of our strategy and you know, what you can also expect moving forward. So first, and, and I think we heard already um, you know, in previous sessions about the other products, but first, it is very important to again tie this to the vision that we have uh, for our overall sustainability management stack. 
And that is what we sometimes call the green line. Now, what is that? When we look how companies make decisions today and, and, and how this will be moving forward, it is clear that you know, whenever we make important business decisions as part of our daily, daily work, we want to embed sustainability also as a decision-making factor. So in other words, we don't just want to make decisions based on cost as bottom line or, or revenue as top line or other factors like, like time or, or you know, quantity, but also always you know, sustainability-related information. And this is why the whole sustainability management stack, as you could see it here, and with the control tower in the center, uh, what, what uh, Stefan has shown, uh, has to be seen in the context of the overall SAP solution portfolio. So in other words, we are embedding sustainability management really deeply and well into our business processes that the SAP portfolio is, is supporting. And that goes in both directions. On the one side, we, we gather data from all relevant sources. And I think we have seen in, in Stefan's demo also how we use, for example, uh, the SAP uh, sustainability control tower to tap into various data sources to get everything we need. And we do this for the other products as well. So wherever we can make use of data that already exists in your enterprise systems, where you have already modeled your company structures, your master data, um, and so on, uh, we make use of that. We, we integrate it with, with the sustainability management stack of SAP, and we derive new insights and, and conclusions out of it. But it also goes into the other direction that we embed back results um, back into business processes. So for example, we uh, you know, embed CO2 footprint that is calculated with the help of SAP product footprint management back into business processes. But equally, and especially moving forward with the roadmap of the sustainability control tower, we will also you know, use the scenarios on top of the control tower to feed back information into you know, business processes. For example, when you want to steer your uh, activities across all of your sustainability goals with the help of the control tower, then of course you, you would want to trigger subsequent actions in, in the underlying business processes to get closer to your goals. And this is something that we plan to you know, address over time also with, with the help of the control tower. So again, that's a very important key message I'd like to take you away with. Uh, we, we embed sustainability management deeply into business processes. We integrate data in both directions. And, and that's a very important uh, principle that you see more and more uh, also with the evolution of our stack. So what can you expect uh, moving forward? Uh, I mean, we, we saw already uh, you know, some of the outlook uh, of, of the control tower, we will of course add more content frameworks on top of control tower. You, you know, what, whatever becomes relevant, whatever becomes standard, we will cover over time with the help of partners uh, as well. Um, so it's important we we give you a lot of mapping and pre-thought integration out of out of the box. But control tower also has the the flexibility that you can of course easily model your own ambitions and and and, and KPIs. So more content and more framework support over time is one topic. Of course, the product will continue to evolve functionally. Clearly, uh, there's a lot that we plan to add to, to it over time. And I'm sure in, in a couple of uh, weeks or months, uh, we will be able to show more. And as I already started to indicate, the steering aspect of, of the SAP Sustainability Control Tower is something that we will also expand over time so that you can derive actions on, on top of it. And then last but not least, it, it, again, it's, it, it's important for me that, and I keep repeating myself on this one, but the ecosystem and the openness is key for our whole uh, approach here because we, we will not be able to solve uh, some of the challenges uh, that are there in front of us uh, when it comes to sustainability with, alone or as one organization alone. We, we tackle this with, with our uh, ecosystem partners. We are working with, with many of them. And we are also contributing and to and 
adopting important standards that are coming up. Um, so openness and ecosystem is a, a, a key principle of what we do. And uh, also in, in the sense of expanding our whole offering into a broader network perspective, uh, that is also something that, that you would see more and more because a lot of the topics uh, don't stop at the walls of your organization. They go beyond your full supply chain, they go beyond the value chain. Um, and, and that's what we need to enable with our products here as well moving forward. Yeah, so that's basically what we uh, quickly wanted to cover uh, today, give you an overview on where we are with the whole sustainability management stack, but also uh, thank you, Stefan, for for showing the uh, sustainability control tower and, and, and where it is today. And uh, at the end of the day, again, our goal is to over time embed more and more sustainability into uh, relevant business processes across SAP's overall portfolio. With that, uh, we'd like to thank you very much and uh, we are open for questions. You're mute. Thank you um, both for, for the presentation and the demo. Uh, we have a lot of questions already. So um, again, for everyone that would like to raise the hand so we can unmute you, let us know, uh, just simply press the button. But let's go into the Q&A. So uh, we have uh, quite a few. Um, Miguel asked, what are the prerequisites for sustainability control tower and what is the pricing model for it? Well, uh well, I could give it a shot and, and please, Stefan, uh, step in. So uh, we have not communicated the pricing model of Control Tower yet. This is coming uh, beginning of, of the new year. So stay tuned on this one. This is still uh, in preparation, but we'll un un unveil this soon. Um, in general, uh, the Sustainability Control Tower by SAP is a, a separate cloud-based uh, SaaS service. And it works, you know, independently of any, you know, other application in SAP. Of course, we have seen, and I think uh, Stefan showed this nicely, that it's deeply integrated with a lot of SAP data sources. But there is no uh, hard technical dependency uh, to any other applications. Of course, we are making use of a, a set of SAP business technology platform components underneath, but that's more within the SAP. Uh, sustainability control tower so um, it's basically independent of you know uh, other components of SAP yeah so Gunther maybe just to add to that uh, yes uh, of course absolutely it's 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 independent it's flexible it's open at the same time I think it's also clear that uh, for customers who already have, you know, a finance, um, you know, finance running on SAP or other kind of big products, they will also benefit from predefined integration. So um, obviously, we are looking um, deeply to not be only open, but also kind of make especially the integration with existing SAP products um, easier. So I think it definitely helps to have a finance or even an HR or success factors in place that will give you even a, a, a smoother ride. Yeah? Thank you both for your answers. Okay, next question. So Sheila asks, how is the CO2 calculated for each scope one, scope two, and scope three emission source? And is the calculation engine available in the sustainability control tower? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is no, the calculation of CO2 is not happening within the SAP sustainability control tower. Uh, we actually have dedicated, uh, you know, functionality as part of the sustainability management stack that we see here in front of us. So, for example, if you calculate product footprint management, so in other words, you, you want to allocate, um, you know, uh, product or footprint to the product, then this is done with the help of SAP. Uh, PFM, uh, I would like to point here to the community session and the corresponding material on how this is done in detail because this will probably lead a little too far. Uh, also, of course, um, it, this, you know, there is uh, the SAP Environment Health and Safety Management with the well-established environments management component, where, for example, where you 
are able to capture a corporate uh, footprint. Now, both these products are, of course, well integrated with the SAP Sustainability Control Tower. So you can use the outcome for the reporting that, for example, Stefan has just shown and bring it together with the other data that we have seen uh, for sustainability. But the calculation itself is not happening in SCT. Mm -hmm. Good. And just so that uh, all attendees and you guys know uh, how we're how we're selecting the questions, I've I've filtered for most upvotes for now. So don't don't be surprised if I'm not going by chronological order. It's now really um, going by the thumbs up. But uh, yeah, let's go to the next question. Do we also have forecasting actionable insights AI enabled for organizations to know that? Based on these dashboard facts, what should be corrective actions and in which area? Also, can we have any benchmarking comparison of metrics here? So uh, I, I can start, and um, but maybe Stefan, please also add. Uh, so these are actually numerous questions. Number one, we have <laughs> we have. Uh, basic straightforward, uh, you know, forecasting as part of the SAP Analytics Cloud uh, in the product, yes, but that's not based on AI. It's it's very straightforward kind of forecasting. So that is what we have. Um, I mean, we are looking into AI use cases and and what we can offer, uh, you know, on on top of the control tower. But that is not yet in a state where I would say we can talk about our roadmap here. Um, benchmarking data, which is the third question here, um, that is certainly something that we are also looking to uh, integrate into a control tower. Um, so we are working with numerous partners here to see what kind of benchmarking data could be included or which you could include yourself, depending on what is of interest for you. So it, it's very important. Control tower is uh, very open. We, we will offer a range of APIs so that such data can be fed in, into our environment as well. So stay tuned, we're, we're working on some of these uh, topics, but we will certainly be able to include benchmarking data over time. Yeah, and to, to add that uh, on, the, on the forecasting or advanced uh, analytics functionality, so here we really, we, we benefit from kind of standing on the shoulders of, of kind of SAP Analytics Cloud. Uh, so um, the, the product has a lot of these kind of functionality already. I would even say the forecasting, maybe not AI, de depending on how you define it, but I think very, very advanced. And we're not uh, leveraging this yet, but I think um, you know, taking this approach of really reusing already existing great SAP technology, we will be able to integrate it quite soon into the product. So from my perspective, it will be uh, quite quite uh, in a good shape when it comes to these more advanced analytics functionality uh, down the line. Thank you. Good, then there is another very popular question with uh, the most upvotes at the moment. Is there any report for EU taxonomy? Stefan, that's one for you, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I could try, <laughs> I could try. It's a, it's a little bit of a beast on its own, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, EU taxonomy, we are very well aware right now. Um, sustainability control tower in the shape that we demoed it now doesn't directly address it, but as Gunther was also mentioning it, we're working with partners to extend and cover other frameworks. So currently there's also a partner which is looking into um, kind of providing a, a content package for EU taxonomy. Yeah. Um, so I would also say it's in the it's in the pipeline, um, but yeah, more more details than to come. Perfect, good. Then next question: Some of the challenges with ESG data: um, a inconsistency and b its self disclosure nature. If you want to use the system for audit, how do you validate the data with a company that discloses about itself and use it as a reliable resource for an ESG investment decision. Okay, I think again, this is numerous points in one. <laughs> um, let me maybe address the inconsistency part first. Uh, I mean, in general, fully agreed that one of the challenges in sustainability is the fact that 
there is indeed a data fragmentation or inconsistency. Um, and, and the whole control tower idea, as a sustainability control tower idea, is to address some of this inconsistency, bring it closer together. We are also building some validation aspects into our product and tool so that you have the chance to review data be, before it's propagated further into the next step, that you have a chance to do some plausibility checks and, and so on. Uh, so there will be, and, and this is already partially there, there are parts in our products where we valid, help you validate the data. That's, that's one part. Um, now, auditing and, and certification will be important aspects or are already important aspects in sustainability in general. We are building you know, capabilities into our products that enable audits, uh, for example, some logging and, and related uh, capabilities. Um, but in general, some of the frameworks we have touched upon actually make it uh, uh, possible over time that data becomes more comparable and, and that the status that uh, individual organizations are in is more comparable. That's, that's the point why we are addressing things like uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, World Business Council for Sustainable Development, GRI, um, yeah, and, and so on. So uh, it, it, in general, we, it's our intention to make things more auditable and more uh, you know, comparable. Um, but then again, it, it is subject to a deeper discussion in which industry are you, under which regulations are you, what are the local rules that need to be obeyed, uh, so it's it's unfortunately a pretty um, challenging situation uh, in, in sustainability in general across all of the regions and industries. Thank you. And I just see in the chat that there is a comment related to that question that um, regarding use of the data for ESG investment decisions, most investors will use validated data from the ranking orgs as NP, CDP. A comment yeah. added yeah. to this. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Again, mm -hmm. this is something where we where we actually integrate and partner. We don't we don't want to provide company ratings. This is not our core business, uh, but we understand that some of the data from the control tower could be relevant for these ratings, and the other way around, uh, we can also integ integrate data from these ratings into a sustainability control tower where this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, then next question from Vincent. Is there any regulatory disclosure model embedded into the solution like CSRD, SABS, or other? And I'm sorry if I cannot <laughs> say the abbreviations. Stefan, that's again, I think, a topic of roadmap. Do you have any thoughts on this one? It, it's roadmap and, and partners, partner ecosystem as well, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think um, the whole space is obviously currently suffering for this wide, for the, this massive amount of standards and regulations. I think this is really holding the the whole space uh, back a bit, or at least makes it not not really easy to navigate. Um, and as you mentioned, yeah, I, I think we don't have the ambition to to cover all the standards and all the all the frameworks. We wanna support the main ones. Yeah? We started now with, um, with the one from World Economic Forum. Um, and luckily, there seems to be some convergence when it comes to a you know, more widely accepted global standard coming out of, of, of COP26 um, recently. Yeah? So um, we, of course, also we are aware of SASB. We are aware of uh, GRI. GI is actually powering most of the World Economic Forum. Um, metrics, but um, yeah, uh, I think we um, one of the next frameworks. I think that's yeah, maybe it's already fair to say we will look into TCFD uh, to support that natively, and, and then um, see you know where where we take from there with partners and and how to best uh, get get coverage and hopefully hopefully at one time have this one main standard that we can all agree on. Yeah, so. Um, that's what I would say. Thank you. And another comment here, GRI would be a very good choice. Look at the disclosure closure research. <laughs> so thanks yeah. for the comment here. Um, by the way, just want to say thank you to all participants. Uh, we have more than 30 questions here in Q&A. Um, 
for now, if you would like to speak up, feel free to raise your hand. Um, if we don't get to all the questions being with us, we will try to address them at a later point. And um, there's always a chance for you to, of course, raise the question in the community. Um, the sustainability community page I've shared in the chat is where you can find all the latest information, also blog posts. Gunther has po posted one just two, two days ago. And this is where you can definitely follow up and continue that um, yeah, lively discussion in exchange. OK, continue with the next question. Each and every country will have different calculations on the CO2. How are we handling those scenarios? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if every country will really have its own ways of calculating CO2, but certainly the, uh, the, the point is right that there is still a large variation of how CO2 could be calculated. Um, and, and I think, uh, as, as Stefan also rightly said, we hope to see some convergence of standards, convergence of standards over time. We are actively contributing to uh, standards. And for example, uh, we are also part of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development activities around standardization of carbon data exchange. Um, so wherever there is a standard you know, visible that is truly accepted. Uh, we will, of course, support this and 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 do that. So that's one aspect to hopefully bring the different approaches together. But there's another one, and that is transparency. I believe you need to, at any point in time, always be able to see for every footprint how it has been calculated, um, because only with, with such an approach, auditors and everyone can always see. That was the calculation behind it. That were the factors that were uh, used in it, and so on. And and I think that's what we can provide here for standardization. And then again, I hope that over time, uh, more and more common standard across industries and countries are are showing up. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, can you please explain how the end-to-end -end data integration is done from measuring instruments for GHG? Yeah, so um, maybe I start with the fact that, you know, companies have already, and at least many companies have already established ways how to measure a greenhouse gas. For example, a lot of SAP customers do this with, with the help of um, SAP Environment Health and Safety Management on a corporate level. There are, you know, numerous means on how you how greenhouse gas data can be uh, entered there, but also can be uh, measured with the help of devices and then integrated into it. That's basically something which is there uh, since a while, and we are on the corporate level um, expanding this as well in EHS. Um, and but then also what the sustainability control tower has to enable is that you are able to tap into those places where this has already happened today. So we have a strong integration with EHS on our side. But if, if you are doing this in different systems in, in, you know, in, in your landscape, then of course we wanna be able to connect to those sources as well. Uh, again, in our stack, which you see in front of us here, this is simply an integration between uh, EHS and the SAP Sustainability Control Tower, as well as if you do it on a product level, again, between SAP Product Footprint Management and the Control Tower. Yeah, so I think it's important to understand, so. Um, sustainability control tower is not a kind of an emission factor calculation engine or anything of this right like it's, it's bringing together the data from from other sources so this is why it's a control tower and Gunther just mentioned the, the SAP solutions that would do this and you can obviously nicely integrate if you don't use these solutions you could also bring the data from other uh, systems that you might use so it's yeah not not really uh, covered directly in the functionality of sustainability control. Thank you. Okay, let's move to the next question. So you showed the, the dashboard, great dashboard as a comment. Can you please explain how do you re, uh, derive carbon intensity for each assets separately and aggregate at company level? You wanna give it a step, Stefan? And maybe if we need more like input from from here, it 
uh, the invitation is still here. Um, we can unmute you to to also expand on the question. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, and Stefan, feel free to add more um, details here. But it's important uh, the SAP Sustainability Control Tower is not the place where we, um, you know, record or um, you know aggregate. Uh, carbon that's it's not the nor not the corporate nor the product footprint management uh, capabilities of our stack this is why we build our sustainability management with these modular services where there is a clear purpose per per service and then they interact together uh, so that you know aggregation or disaggregation uh, uh, happens in either ehs uh, or in, if it's on the product level on in, in pfm this is not happening in a uh, control tower itself of course and i think stefan if you may want to add when you showed the data warehousing uh, cloud part of course with that that is a place where of course you could do also aggregations and and hierarchies and and this kind of uh, kind of uh, operations if you want to. Absolutely. So I, I think, I, I don't know if, um, if you know, intensities also go in the direction of, you know, kind of uh, having a CO2 emission per employee or having an em CO2 em emission per euro of revenue, right? Because it might also be an interesting information to not only look at your absolute footprint, but in relation to how many employees you have, how many um kind of what revenue you make so this will be possible yeah but not really the the detailed calculation of, of co2 emissions for this we have other systems but basically when it comes to calculation and bringing co2 data in context of your employees your revenue your you name it or a training spend in in, in context of uh of um number of employees and so on this will be possible in sustainability control towers. So those would be kind of custom KPIs that could be easily uh, modeled. And, and some of the most common use cases we will also kind of provide from our side in, uh, in, in the next iteration of our products. Yeah. Thank you. And for those that are watching the recording, just want to um, repeat the question from Supro. It was about, can you explain how do you derive carbon intensity for each asset separately and aggregate at company level? And Supro would like to um, ex expand or talk also. I saw he raised his hand. So Supro, I'm just um, giving you permission. So you need to unmute you. So, yeah, now you can talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Joseph uh, from Pricewaterhouse India, and uh, no, Shubro and me are attending this. So the question, I think the answer was given by Stefan. You know, mm -hmm. my question was, if you want to have a normalization of any of the indicators that you are fetching from uh, the SAP modules into the control tower, and if you want to present that data in a a normalized way uh, based on the context, then I think that can be done in the control tower. Uh, that's what I understand from Stefan. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stefan. All right, then let's move forward with the next question. Um, how will other ESG reporting standards uh, be supported in sustainability control tower? I feel we we talked about this uh, already. So it's really about yeah. uh, you know roadmap partner ecosystem. Um, so I don't know if we should really um, um, mention it again. I don't know. Okay, good. Sorry, then I wasn't paying attention enough. So let's move on with the next one. How is it integrated to EHS and PFM? Can we do emission management from SCT? Yeah, uh, again, maybe we uh, we partially addressed this with one, some of the other answers. Uh, again, the, the EHS EM module covers um, corporate carbon management um, and, and uh, has means to record that and, and manage it. Uh, PFM is on happening on the product level, making use of data from also various sources. 
So the actual emissions management itself does not happen in controlled tower. We make use of it uh, when it when you, you are doing it on EHS EM or in, in, in on a product level in PFM and we integrate. Um, but it, it's important we have this clear separation of concern where where things are done in, in the different products. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, it can all work together. This is why this is one sustainability management stack where at the end of the day, there's a lot of synergies and integration between these components, of course. Okay. And um, now, as we are approaching the end of the uh, session, just want to mention, um, maybe don't submit further questions here in the Q&A area as we might not be able to get to it, but please post them in the community. So for those that are watching the recording and or don't have access to the chat at the moment, uh, simply go to community.sap.com. You will find under topics, the sustainability community topic page. And this is where you find all the information and where you can also probably find already questions asked and answered by community members and experts. Now let's maybe have one or two more questions and then we'll um, unfortunately need to um, end the call already. So, okay, next question is how about the license, licensing? Do we need one license for sustainability control tower or separate licenses for um, SAC, analytics cloud and connected systems? So goal is to have one license. Uh, that's what we clearly strive for. Uh, initially, this is offered as a bundle, uh, but uh, our goal over time clearly is to go towards one license. Okay, then I see one hand raised um, by a participant and I'd say let's um, let me allow Juval to talk. Yes. Hi. Hey. Hi, good afternoon. Um, what is what are the differences between PAPM and the control tower solution? Ah, that's that's a good one. Uh, the control tower uses PAPM intrinsically, um, so that's one component of it. But the as sustainability control tower is much broader, uh, offers additional functionality, uh, but it's making use of the PAPM capabilities as well in intrinsically. Great, thank you. Cool. Okay, then let's continue with um, another person I'd like to talk. I think it's always great to hear from the audience directly instead of me reading the questions. So Balas, or sorry if I don't say it correctly, you can talk now. Thank you, thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Yes, a little bit louder, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. Okay. Very interesting uh, session. My question is more about scope three because uh, Stefan, I think you mentioned that the system gives the opportunity to, to project the, uh, the carbon emission to employees. But this is uh, my concern because, I mean, in terms of uh, scope three, employees and, and commuting of employees uh, gives a significant amount of, of uh, GAG emission in scope three. And if you do it on the scope two level, Unfortunately, the, the, the data won't be, or the report won't be so accurate. So what would be your next step in terms of scope three integration? Thank you. Yeah, um, maybe I can cover this. Uh, you're totally right. Scope three is, of course, one of the great challenges in, in this whole topic of decarbonization. Our plan is, and, and, and we have, already today capabilities both in, in uh, you know, uh, EHS, uh, EM, as well as in product footprint management to address parts of the scope three. Um, and, 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 you know, of course, scope three has an upstream and, and a downstream um, aspect to it, so to say. But uh, we plan to add more capabilities uh, to PFM, for example, um, to address uh, additional parts of, of scope two, as, excuse me, scope three. So uh, for example, take transportation and distribution or business travel, uh, we, which are important parts of, of, of scope three. So uh, stay tuned, we will publish more roadmap uh, 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 parts, uh, especially also in PFM to address additional um, scope three items. 
Thank you. All right, I would say then with this, uh, we are at the top of the hour. Thank you so much for the lively participation, but really a huge thank you to Gunther, to Stefan for your time, for your commitment to have this community call. And as you can see, it's super valuable. It's a great exchange that we have. It's, it's really awesome to see all the questions that you were able to answer already during this call and so many more that, that were coming. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks from our side as well. Thank you.